My name is Sergey Shelkov, and I'm the sales executive here at EPOM Answer. Today, I wanted to welcome you for the second part, the advanced portion of how to set up the campaign in EPOM and how to make the most out of all the features that EPOM platform, EPOM Ad Server can offer you. So last time we finished on creation of our publisher setup, the advertiser setup, but it was only enough to actually run an ad and not do anything besides that. So today I will cover advanced things like targeting, pricing, limitations, capping, conversion tracking, and analytics so that you would have a full understanding of what Ebom is capable of. Now let's go back to the campaign that we've created last time on the test campaign is over here. And I wanted to show you a couple of these things over here, these features. So let's start off with targeting. What targeting does is it would allow you to show the campaign that you've chosen, this test campaign in our example, to display only on the traffic that meets the criteria that you decide. Now, what you can do is for every point in our targeting mechanism, you can add, you can include or exclude any of the parameters that you can see over here. Let's start ahead with the country. Over here, you can choose either a region or just a separate country to be included or excluded. Now, now if you were to include, let's say Algeria, only the traffic that's coming to this campaign from Algeria would be viable to show this ad. If traffic comes from any other country in the world, this campaign would not be shown to them. If you're choosing Algeria as an exclude, it means that the traffic from all the countries in the world would be enough to show an ad there, but if the traffic comes from Algeria, then the ad would not be shown. This happens with all the features, as I mentioned, such as languages, IP ranges. It allows you to add either a certain IP address or a range of IPs. Browsers and operating systems allow you to add not only well, browser, but also using logical operators, you can choose a version of the browser and of course do the same thing with the operating system as well, targeting, for example, something that's older um, than Windows 8. Location allows you to target up to the city level of your choice for every country in the world. So if we were to go with Ukraine, we can choose over here the region of Ukraine that we're interested in and then add a city inside of that region. Mobile carrier allows you to select out of this big, big, big list of pretty much any mobile carrier in the world it will support. Wi-Fi traffic allows you to include it or exclude it. It's used for, let's say, very uh, heavy banners. If you don't want to show them on cellular connection, it may take a lot of data usage. Uh, then you can include only Wi-Fi traffic to make sure that the ads would only appear when a user is using Wi-Fi connection. Custom parameters is something I will tell you about a bit later on. Device format allows you to differentiate between desktop, tablet, mobile, and smart TV to show your ads on. Cookie value is essentially retargeting. We'll stop on that a bit later as well. Domain allows you to select a specific domain or a subdomain for the ads to be shown only there. And day and time targeting allows you to define on which days and on which hours these ads should run. This targeting, of course, is not mandatory, but it is very useful if you want to optimize appropriately and if you don't want to waste your money on buying something that you don't need. Pricing allows you to define how much you're getting paid to run these types of campaign. We support CPM, CPC, or CPA campaigns, again, with the ability to define the pricing globally or for every country individually. Limitations allow you to select when the campaign should start, when it should end, and what is the total and daily impression limit, total daily clicks, total daily conversion, by default, budget, the campaign you want to allocate to try to spend the limit as fast as possible. But if you have the flight dates and a limit of your choice and put it on even pacing, then the campaign would spread it all evenly. Final step would be to tell you a bit about capping. EPOM supports three levels of capping. We've got frequency capping, click capping, and action capping. Frequency capping allows you to define the maximum amount of times the ad from this campaign would be shown to a unique user over a period of time. So for example, if you set it as once per 24 hours on frequency capping, what it does is after a unique user sees an ad from this campaign, a cooldown worth of 24 hours would start and only after that cooldown ends, 
that same unique user would be able to see an ad from this campaign again. Click capping works the same way, but if you nullify the frequency capping and instead add click capping to once per 24, but what happened in this case is unique user can see the ad from this campaign any amount of times, but after the user clicks on the ad, then the cooldown of 24 hours would start. This is useful in a way that the user would only stop seeing the ad after they interact with it. Action capping is very similar to click capping with the only difference that the user would not be shown an ad after the user converts. If the user registers somewhere or signs up to a newsletter. All these things are available on both campaign level and on the banner level and allow you to create your own environment in which the ads would run in the most efficient way possible. Let's move forward to the analytics. On the analytics, you have a general report that's available to you that allows you to run pretty much all the data that you would need. The date range could be anything. We don't fold the data, we don't archive it. It's always available for you. Breakdown is up to an hour and you can group the results by something related to the publisher, something related to the advertiser, country, action, or you can actually do a lot of them at the same time. Over here, you will find the, find the filters, filters by countries, by placement types, placement sizes, and you can define for which advertiser you want to run the report for, which campaign you want to see, and which banner. Over here in report settings, you can see which metrics are of interest to you and define what you want to see in the report. And once you click on report, it will generate you numbers for impressions, clicks, click through rate, conversions, impression to conversion ratio, click to conversion ratio, how much money you have to pay off to the publisher, how much money the advertiser has to pay off to you, and your profit, and the same things for eCPMs. You can export this report to CSV, XLS, PDF, HTML, or fetch it through an API, and you can save this specific template that you've set up as a report template, meaning that you can choose it and put it on scheduled execution, defining the days, time of day, and file format. This report would be generated automatically and sent to the recipients that you specify over here. Conversion tracking is something that EPUM uses to track actions. An action could be anything. It could be a registration, it could be a download of promotional material, it could be a sign up to a newsletter. How it works is you go to Actions tab over here and you create a new action. Let's call it a sign up. After you do that, this window opens and you can see that there are two ways available to track conversions. Both of them, both of them use Postbacks, of course. Uh, so how this happens is you have to add to your landing page a parameter called action ID with a macro, or you add this to a code that's provided to you by your third party advertiser. If that's the case, then you should ask them where you should insert this parameter and value. Once you do that, whenever a user clicks on your banner, they're being redirected to the actual landing page and this macro that's limited by two dollar signs over here, would become a unique identifier based on a lot of features, based on the IP of the user, time of day, placement ID, banner ID, and other stuff. So what we do is we send that information as a string of numbers and figures, uh, as a string of numbers and letters to the landing page. The advertiser has to capture the value of this macro that was generated remember it, and once a conversion happens, the advertiser should call this postback or, or action tracking URL, what we call it. Of course, substituting the dollar dollar sub ID dollar dollar to the actual value that they have captured when a user visited the landing page. This is essentially how a postback, a server to server integration method works, and this would allow EPOM to understand whenever a conversion happens, because in this case, the advertiser's server would define what a conversion is and then notify EPOM that a conversion happened and EPOM would put that information into the analytics so that you can see which uh, banners generate more conversions, which publishers generate more conversions and work with that accordingly. One thing that I've missed 
when explaining targeting was custom parameter, which is actually a very interesting thing. What it does is it allows you to target by first party data that the publisher has. Please keep in mind, this is not the same as DMP. What this does is, let's say that you're working with a publisher that runs a forum and for the users to log in to, that, to their page, uh, they need to specify their date of birth. Now that information would only be available, of course, to the publisher. And what EPUM allows you to do is modify, or rather let your publisher modify this invocation code, uh, this ad tag that they place on their site to include any parameter the publisher knows. So if a publisher can have some sort of a JavaScript or some sort of a macro to get hold of, let's say in this case, the date of birth or how old the user is, they can pass that information within an ad request onto EPOM, and that would be considered a custom parameter. There are no limitations on the number of custom parameters or on the number of values that are being passed to EPOM, but what you can do is you can target those parameters afterwards. So you can set up a campaign that says, okay, the age should be over 21, for example. And this campaign would only be shown if within an ad request that's being sent to you by your publisher exists a parameter of age with a value of 21 or over. Only then this campaign will be shown. This works incredibly well with the publishers that can pass any bit of information, maybe a category of their website, maybe some keywords, anything else. And it allows you to target the ads very, very specifically. Another thing that I've uh, missed is cookie value, which is used for retargeting. And how it works is in preferences, what you have is the ability to create a non-secure and a secure set cookie pixel. Essentially, this is a GIF one by one pixel that allows you to set up the name of the parameter and its value and place this onto your advertiser's website. When visiting said website, a cookie would be dropped onto the user and you can target that parameter and a value afterwards through targeting by cookie name and cookie value. Meaning that you would only target the users that have been on that website. EPOM works on manual optimization by default, but of course there's an option to utilize our automated optimization. What we have is CTR and I2C optimization that works between banners within the same campaign. And how it works is I2C is impression to conversion, so essentially conversion ratio. How it works is EPOM would put more weight to the banner that have a higher click-through rate or that have a higher conversion rate, thus promoting the banners that perform better. But there's also an ECP optimization. And what this does is it allows you to pit the campaigns against each other. EPOM would take into consideration the geo, the placement and the campaign, meaning that on the same placement, two different campaigns could be shown depending on the geo that the users are visiting from. And what it does is it will calculate the amount of money you're getting per thousand impressions across all of the campaigns linked to one placement. And EPOM would then show the campaign with the highest ECPM, guaranteeing that you'll make the most possible amount of money. There are additional configuration features, but it would take a bit more time to explain thoroughly. So please refer to your account manager to get any help with that. This concludes part two, advanced features tutorial of EPOM ad server. And today we dove a bit deeper into what EPOM can do for you. Please keep in mind that EPOM has over 800 features and showing all of them would be just impossible. So if you have any questions about what EPOM can or cannot do, please talk to your manager or just drop a line to support at epom.com. Thank you for being with me. I hope that you had some insights how to work with EPOM and I hope this helps you generate more yield or generate more revenue out of the business that you're currently ma making using EPOM. Thanks and bye-bye.